breaking news. We're keeping you posted on that breaking news situation in Marion County where two deaths have been reported. We have a reporter with us now, Tony from Columbia, Mississippi, where those two deaths are confirmed. Tony, what can you tell us about that situation? Yeah, this is a, an active scene right now, and it remains a very, very dangerous scene. I'm in a parking lot near the intersection of Mississippi Highway 13, where it intersects with Mississippi Highway 98, which runs to the, to the east and west. There is a ton of broken glass in this parking lot. Roofs are damaged. Cars are very, very badly damaged. I walk down the highway a little bit. There are power lines, draping the power lines, and numerous homes numerous homes have been badly damaged or destroyed. You can see debris littering the highway. There are stunned residents walking around in disbelief that this has happened to them two days before Christmas. Very stunned, very, very uh, surprised, and very upset. Neighbors are hugging each other. They are trying to comfort each other. There are emergency officials, of course, on the scene here, trying to keep people away from the glass, trying to keep people away from the debris, and of course, away from those power lines as well. Tony, this is Sala. Do we know anything about, I know it's still too early. If you don't know, it's okay. I'm just curious to know if we know anything about these people who perished? Are they residents in this area? Did they live in the same home? Are they from two different homes? What do we know? Yeah, I do not know the answer to that yet. I've been trying to get closer to, a, to emergency officials to talk to them. Basically, what I'm hearing from witnesses, however, in this area where I am, in this parking lot where I am, again, it's near the intersection of Mississippi Highway 13 and 98, is that they have seen a lot of people with more minor injuries people who were either struck by debris or who were cut on on glass as it was you know flying through flying through the air or you know cut on uh, cut on glass after the fact again the rain is really still still coming down here there there is lightning you have people who are really just trying to seek shelter and stay out of the way but again people also trying to survey the damage of their homes some of which have been, you know, badly damaged or completely, completely destroyed. And this parking lot has numerous cars with, you know, windows shattered, windshields shattered. So glass is just everywhere up here. Tony, let's talk about for a moment the emergency crews. What are you seeing in terms of how they're doing, what they're doing, how are they alerting residents, what are they telling residents to do at this hour? Yes, so I was concerned about the ability to actually make it down to the parking lot. I had initially been told that Highway 98, which again runs to the west to east, east to west, was closed. The highways, the major highways in this town do appear to remain open at this time, but they are down to one lane and police authorities are directing traffic. I did not have to show any sort of media credentials to get to get to this parking lot. So I think the general public is still being allowed into this area. But, you know, I hear people, I hear officers on bullhorns urge, urging people to be cautious and to proceed cautiously on the highways as well. So, again, uh, it, it really is a scene of, of, of devastation here. Again, a lot of these people, you know, were at home. On their Christmas break, when this tornado, a apparent tornado, came barreling through just a few hours ago, and now they are just still in that in that period of shock. And like you say, really just unthinkable this time of year. Absolutely, you know, a, a woman was was crying just a little while ago. She was being consoled by by a neighbor, and and it's just you know very very tragic for something like this, of course, to happen at any time of year, but but particularly it, it's heartbreaking now. All right, Tony, our chief meteorologist, Margaret Orr, wants to chime in. Uh, she has a question for you. Tony, my question is, were people aware of this potential for severe storms and tornadoes? We were under a tornado watch. We had been on the air with the severe weather potential. But my question is, did they realize it? Were they watching to be? Did they know? You know, Meg, I will say this. I was at my parents' house, which you know was about 20 miles to the west of here. You know, our phones, our iPhones were blowing up with tornado watches, tornado warnings. So if people did not know, they should have known. Yet at the same time, given that, given that we are seeing injuries and the kinds of injuries that we are seeing, it seems as though many people potentially were exposed to the element or were near glass. Uh, potentially when this when the storm came through a couple of hours ago, a few hours ago. How many people do you know are injured? I missed that part. 
Yeah, I don't have a, a clear number. What I am hearing from witnesses at the scene is that they have seen a number of people who suffered injuries, you know, ranging from, from hitting debris to cutting themselves on, on blast. I have heard no reports, at least from where I am, which, again, is near the intersection of Highway 13 and 98. I have not heard any critical injuries in this particular location, which is one of the epicenters. I walked, you know, a significant ways down Highway 13, walking southbound, where the homes are just demolished. But I have, again, not heard of any major injuries at this particular location. All right, Tony, we really want to thank you so much for that. And uh, be safe out there. And we certainly uh, send our best out to all those people out there. So just to sort of recap.